Radio Outcast is a mythic gunslinging podcast for mature audiences. Content warning. This episode contains depictions of depression that may be upsetting for some listeners. We encourage our listeners to prioritize their safety before venturing ahead. Thank you. I don't know what to tell you, Mom. I, 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 don't, I don't know what to tell anyone. I'm tired. I'm so fucking tired. Emmy's taken my voice from me before. What's, what's one more time, right? What's the point? Hey, it's me. Guess I'll talk to you later, Mom. Not sure if you're even listening to these prayers anyways. <clears throat> hey. Um, hey. Charles is here too. Hey? Really, Rogers, is this it? Is this why you dragged me away from the first decent night's sleep any of us have had since we first started walking aimlessly away from that wretched cult? If you were half the badass map maker you say you are, or if you hadn't broken that machine of yours, it wouldn't have nearly been as aimless. Oh, yeah? I'd love to see you try to find a tower without me. (sighs) You guys... Sorry. We wanted to check in on you. He wanted to check on you. I told him you were fine. I am. See? It appears I was right yet again. Just listen. We've been moving non-stop since Montana. We were lucky to run into Walker, and luckier that he's housing us while we're in Deadwood, so since we don't gotta worry about food or shelter for a change, I figured, well, I, I figured, oh, damn it, just talk to us, all right? Huh? Really? Barefoot, you've been off. Ain't yourself. Like your head's here, but your mind's elsewhere. And, you know, I figured if it was one of us, you wouldn't shut up till we... I don't know. To open up. But... Maybe this was stupid. Mm, Finally. A sensible conclusion. After all, the gal's a goddess, Rogers. Remember, it's not as though she needs to fear death. But I'm not... A goddess anymore. Am I, Mom? I'm a... immortal. Or close enough. Am I afraid to die? What will happen? Anyhow, I'm off to bed. Oscar, why do you have to be such a- Can't hear you already sleeping. (sighs) Ah. Ah. Fuck. Technically, this tale began before today. Two nights ago when we had just arrived at Deadwood. After that cult fortress, Charles had us wandering Dakota for some days. He had not a damn clue. 
Seemed we travel the same creeks over and over, watching the sun rise and fall. Until a man with a broken wagon wheel pointed us to Deadwood. Said there was some strange tower there. He was a Dutchman who went by the name of Walker. Told us if we helped him, he'd show us the way and even give us a couple of rooms to crash in for the trouble. We got into town late into the night, so we'd agreed we'd check out the tower the next day. But Helix had been acting strange. Figured we should do something to help. Said before I could get to the bottom of what was wrong, someone threw stones through Walker's windows and old rags lit on fire that had been dipped into oil. Weren't no crime of passion. I could tell right then. Yes, he. Thank God. Fire. The, the, the fire. Yeah, I see it. What should I do? It, it's a fire. Uh, I'll go get water. Walker just kept running in circles, pointing and declaring what was going on. Not much help. I ran over and ripped the curtains down from the windows. Luckily, one set hadn't caught yet. The flames were small enough to snuff at. Helix stood in the hallway, watching this all go down. Didn't panic. Didn't do much of anything, in fact. She just looked half asleep. Incoming! Thank God. It's over. If you two hadn't been here... They got away. Well, dear Walker, it seems that you have enemies in town. I... I don't understand. Why would someone do this? Wondering that myself. Oh no. Oh no. What will I do? I was lucky you two were here to help, but next time... Mm. Helix was still. Normally this would be the sort of thing to get a reaction out of her, but nothing. Felt bad for Walker. Seemed a good man, but Helix was my biggest worry. If a raging fire didn't snap her out of it, then traveling before she felt better would be too dangerous. Might get herself killed from doing nothing. Hey, Walker. Let us stay a couple more days and I'll get this guy for you. What do you say? Uh, yes, of, of course. It sounds dangerous. Are, are you sure? I mean, uh, of course. Yes. You st be be careful. Yeah, careful. That's what I'm known for. Done. Feels a bit anticlimactic after all the trouble we've experienced finding this tower, don't you think? All we did was stride into the lower main street so you could touch it. It's just, I mean, standing right here. Plain as noon. Just as any regular tower. What? You rather someone try to stab you again? Of course not. Helix, what uh, gift did you receive this time? Helix. Mm. Perhaps like this. Barefoot, you with us? Charles. A word? Mm, I suppose. What is it? She's still not right. Gonna need you to watch her today. Absolutely not. I plan on spending this little respite of hours at the Gem Theater testing my luck at the card tables. She's fine. She said so herself, and if you're so worried about her... You watch her. Ken, gotta go look for that asshole that tried to burn down Walker's place. I don't see how that translates into me taking orders from you, Rogers. It's a job. I gotta finish it. Part of my- Your code. Oh, heavens, do I know your code, your concerns, your deal. None of these have anything to do with me. 
the earth shall up and lurch, according to Jesse Rogers' blessing. Listen here, you bastard. No, 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 You listen here. We watch her day in, day out. Helix is a uh, goddess, no? She is millions of years old. She can take care of herself. Now, if you need me, I will be at the gym. And I assure you, you shall not need me. Ugh. Understood? I will see you both later this evening, or, if I'm lucky, I won't see either of you until morning. Cheerio, pip pip, and adieu. Selfish prick. What do I do with you, Elish? Guess that's my answer. I'm not hungry. Yeah, stomach of yours been growling all morning. You gotta eat. You ain't immortal these days. Fine. Does the lady want anything to drink? No. Yeah. Can we get a couple glasses of milk to go with her buckwheat cakes? Right away. Jesse, I told you I'm fine. You're a better liar than normally. You know, Charles made a good point. You're millions of years old. He's what? 20-something? Makes me the youngest. 21. Hmm. Yet, somehow I wind up being the adult among us time and time again. Not trying to be patronizing or nothing. You know that, right? But I've got something I gotta take care of for Walker, and I've got you to take care of too. All I'm asking is you make this, whatever is the matter with you, less of a hazard. You gotta start eating. Gotta run when there's a fire. And hell, you gotta start taking care of your body, all right? Won't be the one to do that for you. I know. There you are. Thanks. Hey, can I ask you something? Yes? What is it? How long you been in Deadwood? A uh, decade now. You know Arker? The Dutchman? Yeah, him. The flighty one. We're staying with him on our way through this territory. Someone tried to set fire to his place last night. Any idea who might have reason to do so? Walker isn't the most popular man in town. Yeah? He's a one-stater. Plenty of folks thought he wouldn't come back when he left town last month. Before he left, he got drunk at the gym and got into an argument with Ben Stockdale. Wound up with a bruised chin from what I heard. Ben Stockdale. That's the man. Any chance you heard what they argued about? Statehood. At least that's what I was told. Ben's a friend of Frank Zeebach, and a very vocal divisionist. I don't much mind these arguments about politics personally, but I do know people who think single statehood is a thing for these lands. Better keep their mouths shut if they know what's good for them. Hmm. Wonder if Walker left because of that argument. This Stockdale guy. Where might I go looking for him? Couldn't tell you myself. Right. Thanks. Hey, keep eating. I ain't paying for you to stare at it. I'm sick of chewing. Too bad. <sighs> Need you to finish before I can go after this guy. Now go on. I want to hear that fork against that plate. Play, 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 play. <coughs> this lucky streak of yours has to run out sometime, Mr. Larone. Uh, but Monsieur Anderson, I myself, I, I tell you, I um, I am uh, slowly becoming professional gambler. Uh, look, I am afraid it is only a part of the game, we. Oui? Hmm. I raise. Uh, check. A high <laughs> straight. You know, Monsieur Anderson, I, I come to this uh, dead wood because of its. Famous gambling. Uh, that man, uh, the famous uh, gunman, uh, what is his name? Uh, the one who was uh, shot in the back during a game like this one. You talking about Wild Bill? Wild Bill, yeah, where, 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 what a name. 
He was uh, killed here, wasn't he? Not this, Jim. The original building went down in a fire. Most of the time did. Hmm. A pity. I wish this might be the very same trouble. All right, you morbid fuck. Quit stalling. Show us that hand. Oh, well. Uh, kings full of fives. Apologies, Le Corson. <laughs> Oh my god, no! Damn. Do not worry, monsieur. You may yet beat me at the next hand. <laughs> After asking around a bit, he found out where this Ben Stockdale fellow lived. Nothing more than a small shack on the outskirts of town. Might be another reason he isn't keen on Walker. That difference in wealth, especially considering Walker's an immigrant. Seems Stockdale takes issue with that. Figured I'd find the guy, tell him I knew what he did, and threaten him to stay away. If that didn't work, the plan was to arrange a duel between them, so they'd settle things once and for all. Whatever it takes, can't have these fires getting thrown around this town. Innocent folk could get caught up in it. Stay with Quarter, okay? Y'all hang here near the fence line. You see the guy run off where I get a word with him, you yell. Yeah, fine. Gordon, watch her. Please. When this all started, Helix said I was the muscle of the group. Charles was the guide, I was the muscle. And she, I reckon, considered herself the brain leading us. Reality is, she's the one who's supposed to pry until we fess up to something. Like how she did with me, about my pa. I ain't the feelings guy. Can watch after her all day, but if she won't talk on her own, sure as hell don't know how to make her open up. Haven't even seen her chat to that bird of hers in days, either. Found myself wondering what my ma would tell me to do. She was the one who stitched me together after my pa was killed. She'd probably call me a fool for not being softer with Helix. But that ain't me. Besides, other matters that needed my attention. Once I got up to the shack steps, snuck around to the window to see if a light was on inside. Saw a shadow move across the room. So I knocked. Ben Stockdale. You don't know me, but I don't want any trouble. Thought you might know something about what happened to Walker last night. Just want to talk. Stockdale. Shit. <laughs> Helix was supposed to call out if she saw anything, but of course she didn't. When I came back around to the fence line, they were posted just the same as I left them. Helix just standing there, quarter looking agitated and ignored, and off in the distance, darting across the horizon. I saw Stockdale on his horse riding back into town. Took one look at Helix, her eyes vacant. And I knew I couldn't catch up with her riding along. She'd just slow me down. What? Never mind. Let's just go. Lost my chance. Don't want to go blaming her. It ain't like she decided to feel this way. I'd have to hunt down Stockdale the next day. Gentlemen, I think that will be all for me tonight. Uh, yeah, whatever. Get out of here already, you dumb Frenchie. Let some of us win before the sun rises. Stop, Dale. What's wrong with you? <laughs> that Dutchman. 
hired some gunmen to come after me. The hell? Walker did that? <laughs> you sure? Same guy that left the gym in tears last month. Damn bastard. Thought I'd scared him off. Leave the guy be. Walker's harmless. Not like the man's got as many friends as he's got opinions. You're only making a bad name for yourself if you keep bothering him. Besides, don't want Sheriff Bullock to come after you, too. Whatever. Where's Al? Need a whore for the night to help me forget this all by morning. Move, you dandy. Of course. Uh, good night, gentlemen, and good fortunes to you all. <laughs> uh. <laughs> You're back. Um, Got tired of gambling? Tired of winning. <laughs> I heard about your little escapade this evening. Regardless of how much I do not want to be involved with this grand affair of yours, I happened across information that I'm sure you would like. Mm, really? Really. The man, I suppose you've been chasing all day, the Stockdale gentleman, although I suppose gentleman is not quite the word. Anyhow, he arrived at the Gem Theater as I left. Stockdale, that weasel. There you'll find him come morning. But do not expect my help with this walker situation. I've newfound riches to exploit. I ain't just the walker thing. This whole town will get burned up in this. Oh, well, at least now I won't be running all over Deadwood. Turns out you can be useful after all, Osgood. Yesy, G good morning. Good morning. Did you rest though? Is there a question you actually want to ask? Right. Sorry. Are you any closer? Ben Stockdale's a man. Innocent men don't run the way he did. Don't know why he'd come after you. Can't be this statehood bullshit everyone's talking about. But I figure you do know. Stockdale's got some larger agenda. No doubt in my mind. Which means you lied when you said you didn't know who did this. In the first place. At least that's how it looks from where I'm sitting. I... I didn't lie. Hmm. I'm gonna go find this asshole at the gym theater for you shortly. Alright? I'll challenge him to a duel for you. All you gotta do is meet him on Lower Main Street. High noon. Then you two can sort this thing out on your own. Face to face. Like men. No, I... I, I can't shoot. <laughs> Please. Yes, sir. You must help me. I won't win. What? You want me to shoot for you too? This fight ain't got nothing to do with me. All I care about is these damn fires. Your issues put the whole townsfolk at risk. I know. You hear? I know. I'm sorry, but this is not my fault. I am not lying to you. Please. Your friend. The girl. Helix. Yes, Helix. Tell me, what is she to you? Pain in the ass most days. Can't really get into it, but it's my job to protect her. I understand. The reason we met on the road, why I left Deadwood, I was in Wyoming. I had to take my sister there. What Starkdale got to do with your sister? He tricked her. He works for the Gem Theater's owner, Al. He and Al, they tricked her. But she is my responsibility. I didn't think they saw me. Shit. I thought I was careful. Are you kidding? You disappeared when she did, didn't you? And then you come back? Are you out of your mind? What makes you think they wouldn't connect the dots? I thought so long as she was gone, all I thought about was her safety. I did not think they would come for me after. Then you're an idiot. Maybe, but she is safe. 
Your sister's safe, but this town ain't. Not so long as you've got this little dilemma. Hmm. <sighs> Damn it. Guess I have no choice. Hmm. Oh, good. You're awake. Go get Cordy, yeah. We're going back into town today. Do I have to? Yes. Get on up. Sometimes you gotta be the hard one. Else no one else will get the job done. I'm supposed to get into Deadwood, touch that tower, and get out. <laughs> but I should know by now. It'll never be that easy. Oh. Just like riding in the Lone Flats. Looking for a word on the Vogel gang. Supposed to get into Lone Flats, grab that necklace, pay the bartender, and hunt those bastards down. But then Healy showed up. And Osgood. Well, next thing I know, I'm riding across the West with these two whiny strangers. Hmm. But I guess we ain't strangers no more, huh? We're more... I don't know. Feels like it's been years with them when it's only been a few months. And I just don't know when it'll all end. These towers, them cults, and tumble down towns like these. Each day this tale has become more convoluted than I ever expected. There has only ever been one man I've trusted to tell my story. Me. So in a land full of folks left forgotten, finding myself telling more than just one tale. If I don't do it, who will? Who's gonna spare Deadwood from itself? They said this town burned down once before. Shit, if I know anything, is that history loves repeating itself. And it's a good man's job to make sure only the good parts hang around. Radio Outcast was created by Maria Fernanda Vidal-Razaga and JT Lachese, starring Jay Duong as Helix, Ivory Amor de Francisca as Jesse Rogers, the waiter, and Anderson, Daniel A. Stevens as Charles Osgood, Griffin Otto Deniger as Walker, and JT Lachese as Stockdale. This episode was written and directed by Fernanda. Dialogue editing by Daniel Sotelo. Sound design by Raya Dorsey. With music by Samuel Kinsella. The song at the beginning of this episode is titled Starfall, featuring the voice of Helix, Jade Duong, on vocals. You can listen to the full track on our YouTube page right now. If you want more Radio Outcasts, you can find us online at RadioOutcast.com, follow us on Instagram at RadioOutcastPod, and Twitter at Radio underscore Outcast, or join the Radio Outcast Discord server. If you like what you hear, let us know by leaving us a review on Apple Podcasts, Podcast, Podchaser, or Good Pods. It helps us reach more listeners and gives us a chance to see what you think of the show. If you aren't sure what to say, but you would still like to show your support, you can rate the show on any of those avenues as well, or on Spotify. A special thanks to all of our Indiegogo backers for season two. Your support and donations got us here. Without you, the show would not be what it is. And if you'd like to help us continue to grow, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash radio underscore out. Our patrons have access to behind the scenes material, original scripts, and bonus content, including early access to Q&A sessions and a map of Mata's compound from season one's finale. But if that's too big of a commitment for you, if you become a patron at the Coda tier for as little as $1 a month, you too could get a special shout out at the end of our episodes like... Alan L., that wandering bard who delights our hearts. Miss Talia W., who just found her way into the infamous Deadwood. The most wanted woman this side of the Mississippi, Patricia D. That generous baker from Lone Flats, Lizbeth S. Val V., who lost at cards at the Gem Theater and immediately found her fortune outside its doors. The knower of all tchotchkes and strange antiques, Susan D., Fearless Lila, who has been seen sharing drinks on occasion with Deadwood's own sheriff, Seth Bullock. Bunny Hop, who legend says once beat everyone in Deadwood in a buckwheat eating contest. And of course, Paul R., a new addition to town and a well known cattle wrangler. To all of our patrons, thank you again. We appreciate you. And to everyone listening, safe travels. <laughs>